civics. So, oop, there we go. So we're going to talk about the difference between these three different terms. IDP and the apostrophe S um, or without the apostrophe is a, is a really accepted term of art um, for internally displaced peoples. Um, so don't think anything that the acronym is bad to use or anything like that. Uh, so we're going to go beyond just the basics. So there's some vocabulary that's really important when we're talking about refugees. And I have not put the actual definitions up there because I want you to really focus. I want you guys to write these terms down. And we're going to talk about each of them real quickly. But I don't want you to super focus on getting the exact right definition. That's the only thing to pay attention to. So refugee, um, you guys have already gotten it, and you'll get it again tomorrow. The exact well, Friday or Friday. The exact um, you know UN recognized legal definition of a refugee, and that's really good and important um, to have. But uh, the other ones we want to make sure we just have the concept down, and some of them you guys have already talked about. But the keys to a refugee is that somebody has been forced to flee their own country. So they're no longer inside their country of origin, is how we say it. Um, so they're outside of it. And, and actually, in terms of comparing a refugee to an uh, asylee or asylee, asylum seeker, the refugee wants to return. The refugee wants to go home, but can't for whatever reason. Sometimes they're environmental, and we'll get to that, or political. Uh, sometimes they, they could, it could be social, it could be cultural as well. Uh, so just make sure a refugee implies you know, that they're impelled or they're forced to leave, and that they are physically outside of their country of origin at that time. Then there is the UNHCR. This is another abbreviation or acronym that is, that's how people refer to it. It's the United Nations High Commissioner um, for Refugees. And usually we call it, it's the office of the UNHCR. But people just refer to that as the UNHCR. And it is basically the part of the United Nations that is responsible for refugees. So they have a mandate um, to, to take care of and look out for the legally recognized refugees in the world. It was also established in 1950. Very interesting. Um, the next one is asylum. So somebody that is trying to seek asylum, um, so those two words are really, you know, obviously interrelated. Asylum itself is the, the clemency or the ability that a certain country gives a foreign resident to stay there safely. So I seek asylum, like for example, there are a lot of Iraqis right now that have been seeking asylum outside of Iraq because they are involved in the political strife and would get targeted if they stayed in Iraq. So they the actual asylum itself is the ability, the, the recognition or the process that that person gets in another country to stay there legally and safely. And, safely. and it usually implies that it's going to be a long period of time and often is a pact like citizenship or residency. So the asylum seeker is the person that is fleeing the country and is trying to seek asylum or safety. Well, I already said it a little bit earlier, but can anyone figure out what, uh, what do you think the major difference between an asylee, which is this person, A-S-Y-L-E-E, -E, and a refugee? Yeah. A refugee like, wants to go back to their country of origin, the asylee does it like they yeah. want to stay. I mean, can you guys imagine, what are some situations where you, you have to leave your, ha your home country, your home area, and, but you want to go back. Like, think of an example. Yeah. Like, after, like, a hurricane or something? Totally. Exactly. Like, I mean, we can even think of it internally as well, even though these terms usually imply, out, like, uh, international, intranationally. But, so, after Hurricane Katrina, right, tons of people left that entire area, New Orleans and Louisiana and Mississippi. Um, and many of them wanted to return. So we could see them as a, an example of somebody that was parallel to a refugee. And then an asylee, though, is somebody, who could give me an example of someone who would be seeking asylum, a reason why you wouldn't want to go back? Anybody? Yeah. Um, I would urge you to have a like, uh, protection in that place to where it's not, I think it's better safety, it's a better environment to survive in your own country. That's actually, I'm really glad you said that, because that's not enough, right? Um, what Dre said was that uh, it's about them wanting to uh, find somewhere better to live. 
Uh, but the reality is that's not how legal recognition of refugees work. Because if that were the case, you know, anyone that lived in a country that was less economically developed might make an argument that, well, my life and my children's life would be better if I lived in, you know, one of the Western nations, the United States, or something like that. But that isn't enough justification. So an asylum seeker would have to be literally somebody that cannot go back. So, for example, somebody after after 1991. So we, you know, helped helped defend Kuwait from Iraq in 1991, um, and there were a lot of Iraqis that stood up to Saddam's power at that time and resisted and tried to help the United States and thought we were going to do, you know, a, an overthrow of the Baghdad government. That didn't happen. So all of those people that stood up for the United States effort in Kuwait were were basically put on a list and would have been executed or you know put in prison for the rest of that time if they didn't leave. So they had no possibility of going back whatsoever. So those people would have been seeking asylum. Okay, just move also, along quickly. The one, the one that comes to mind for me are people in, gay people in Uganda. Exactly. Right? So great. in Uganda, they're passing laws making making being gay a law. <coughs> and so somebody who's gay in Uganda could could say. I'm seeking asylum because otherwise my life is going to be horrible if I stay in Europe. Yeah. And I could be beaten and I could be arrested. Well, in Uganda, it's the death penalty. It's yeah. the punishment for being gay. Sorry, you guys are also going to have to forgive me. I am a little sick, so I'm not going to use your chipper self. But it's okay. Um, <laughs> so, a migrant, um, just really quickly, I know you guys have talked about you know migration a lot. What's a very basic definition of a migrant? Anybody, or I'll call on people. Yeah, what were you gonna say? Or somebody just goes to a different place. There you go. Totally. Somebody most important usually who chooses to go to a different place. So they leave one country, go to another country. I mean, the official definition is a wide-ranging term that covers most people who move to a foreign country for a variety of reasons and for a certain length of time. What is, what Super specific. Just like to say, person who moves from place to place. Well, the point is the migrant is somebody moving across countries. That's the big thing. And, and the choice is a part of it. And it's not just a vacation. You know, like a week or two that you're not a migrant. And an economic migrant, specifically, is somebody that moves for economic reasons. So has anyone ever heard of like seasonal or farm workers? Or the, uh, yeah. Anyone heard of those people at all? Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe. OK, so with the, those are people that often are undocumented that move from Latin America, so Central or South America or Mexico, into the United States to do labor during the harvest seasons or planting seasons. And they are only here for a little while. They're seasonal or migrant workers, and then they go back. But it's for economic reasons that they do that. So that's just a distinction. There's a general migrant and an economic migrant. Yeah. So is that kind of like a pull factor, like a brain drain, sort of? That's Even though they're cool. not there for, like, good? Well, brain drain usually implies a skilled worker. So that would be a little little trickier to define in that specific situation. But actually, I'm glad you're thinking about that, because that's going to relate to your exercise that you do Wednesday and Friday. So I don't want to say too much on that, but but to say that that's a good thought to have. Uh, and then an immigrant. I know you guys have had this definition already, uh, in, at least in immigration. So who, who's an immigrant? I would just call on somebody. What do you call that? What's an immigrant? Someone who moves into a country. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Good job. 